Welcome to this online course on logistics of crude oil and petroleum products. This first section is an introduction to the different methods of transport. To begin our discussion, let's take a look at the following world map. We will use this map to show the location of crude oil production centers and consuming areas. The figures that will be displayed on screen are based on the International Energy Agency 2017 data. The figures are expressed in KBD. KBD stands for Kilo Barrel of Oil Per Day. In blue, the production figures for North America, Latin America, Europe, Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. In red, their corresponding consumption figures, also expressed in kilo barrel of oil per day. As seen here, a quick comparison of the location of world oil reserves in the consuming areas shows immediately that many production areas like Russia and the Middle East are far from the major consuming areas like Europe and North America. This means that a large proportion of crude oil must therefore be transported in massive quantities over long distances. In fact, the quantities of crude oil and finished petroleum products that are the subject of long-distance trade currently amount to more than 3,000 million tons per year. Transporting a liquid poses particular technical problems. Specialized receptacles, called tankers, are necessary. Of course, this constraint does not arise when a pipeline is used, but the inflexibility of pipelines prevents them from being used everywhere. In practice, most crude oil buyers have no choice in the method of transport. The means of transport that is the most efficient, the most widely used, and in many cases the only one available to both producers and buyers, is marine transport. For instance, all North Sea production, the production from most African countries, and a large proportion of production in the Middle East, is transported by sea. Nevertheless, in some cases, the buyer can choose between transport entirely by sea or a combination of marine and pipeline transport. For example, Saudi Arabian crude could be shipped to Europe by tanker using the long sea route around the Cape, as illustrated on the map. Or by the use of the Egyptian pipeline, called Sund. This pipeline links the Red Sea and the Mediterranean. Another example is a refinery in the area of Stuttgart in southeastern Germany. This refinery can choose between two pipelines to carry its crude oil shipped via the Mediterranean. The first pipeline is the South European Pipeline, SEPL. This pipeline connects the city of Foz, in south of France, to Strasbourg, and then to Germany. The second pipeline is the Transalpine Pipeline. This pipeline connects Trieste, Austria, and Bavaria, as seen here. There are also large crude pipeline systems in North America, both from the Mexican Gulf and Louisiana offshore fields, and from the Midwest fields in Canada. In these cases, crude oil is delivered inland by pipeline, as it is the case to many inland refineries in other regions. But the balance of demand is still supplied into these pipeline systems by marine imports. The Alaskan oil fields are another example of the use of dual transport mode. The crude goes by pipeline to Valdez, from where it is shipped to the western seaboard refineries. Or through the Panama Canal to the refineries in the southern and eastern states. Now, since most countries have refineries that enable them to meet a good part of their own product requirements, then there is far less long-distance shipment of finished petroleum products than of crude oil. However, the need to balance product supplies between different regions does require a certain level of petroleum product shipments, which are in general made in smaller size tankers than those used for crude oil. We will discuss this in detail further ahead.